welcome to your favourite teacher. Today we're going to be tackling some of the most problematic issues even in our modern society. The debate between science and religion. In 1859, when Stevenson was nine years old, the famous Charles Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species. Many people saw this as an attack on religion, as the book made it impossible for God to have created the world in just six days. The book came out during a time when many people saw science and a belief in religion and the supernatural as being at odds with each other. Many people felt that they had to choose between the two. More people believed that science was dangerous and that they were meddling in matters that only God could control. There are a number of religious references scattered throughout. Victorian society was extremely religious. One particularly prominent branch of Christianity was the Evangelicals. They considered mankind to be naturally sinful, that hard law of life which lies at the root of religion and therefore needing to move from a place of darkness into the light. This can only be achieved through seeking forgiveness from God and living according to strict moral rules. The rules enforced that were derived from religion are being questioned by Stevenson. Many Victorian taboos were based on things that stem from religious ideas about mankind. Self-restraint and modesty was considered pious, or godly traits which indulgence and flamboyancy were certainly not. Religion is both a social and a personal issue, so a culture of shame and hiding began. Utterson very much seems to live by society's rules. He is austere with himself and doesn't give in to temptation. However, others in the novella are not quite so strong. Stevenson wrote Jekyll and Hyde at a time where scientific questioning was becoming more socially acceptable. He examines the ideas that maybe we are all, at root, simply animals. The degeneration of Jekyll into Hyde shares many similarities with Darwin's theory of evolution. When we look at evolution, we think about mankind becoming more civilised, yet Hyde shows us the process in reverse. References such as ape-like and troglodyte confirm to the reader the primitive state our antagonist takes. Many Victorians thought that this view was dangerous as the implications were that science, as well as God, had the potential to create and shape life. Stevenson doesn't just address the controversial work of Darwin, but tackles the boundaries of where scientific inquiry and the supernatural blur. He creates a tension between the world of reason and science and the world of the mystical and seems to suggest the limits of reason when trying to understand personal identity. Jekyll confesses at the end of the novel that he has been fascinated by the duality of man and has taken both to chemical and mystical methods to try and get to the truth. The idea of the crazy scientist fits nicely with the gothic genre. Other stories of this kind, such as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, also question the monstrosity that can be caused by scientific experimentation. This inclusion of a spiritual side to Jekyll's philosophy shows his to be a mind unlike those of the lawyers and the doctors of his society, who restrict themselves to traditional reason. The laboratory is the main setting of the mysterious events in the story. But far from being a place of science and medicine, the lab is deserted and strange, more gothic and spooky than a traditional place of science. Jekyll, once a man of science, is leaving all that behind, leaving it unused as he seeks new, unknown knowledge and truth. Jekyll's scientific work leads wholly towards the mystic and transcendental. He uses science to combat the trials of life in Victorian society. The work Jekyll does frightens and disgusts traditional men of science, such as Lanyon, with whom he used to be close friends. Lanyon deals with the material world. He looks for rational methods and hard evidence. The transformation is described as sickening and provokes a deadly nausea and a horror of spirit. Lanyon, in fact, is so shocked, overwhelmed and unable to process what Jekyll has done that he dies soon after learning of it. He can't bear the destruction of his stable, rational worldview. Hyde is considered unholy, the spirit of hell, and Jekyll a secret sinner. Hyde is described quite literally as being beyond rational description. The most noticeable trait is an unexplainable air of evil or deformity, which can neither be described concretely nor ascribed to any medical cause. This idea of deformity, 
both in the body and of the mind, fuels the power of the supernatural over the natural. Jekyll's science causes death and destruction, which may represent the power it has to upset the status quo in society. And behind all the action of Jekyll and Hyde in the novel, a fear lurks for all the characters. The threat of madness and the threat of a new world, of new science, new traditions, new disorders that traditional science and reason can't comprehend or deal with. Whilst Jekyll was chief of sinners, making breakthroughs with his experiments, they tormented him and he became chief of sufferers, demonstrating the unknown limits and power of science that no man can master. So if we think about Stevenson's view, is he answering any questions about the world or is he just asking them? How might a modern audience receive ideas about science and religion? You have to remember that things that would have been considered unsettling to a Victorian audience may not horrify a society that can clone and genetically engineer. It doesn't make this cautionary tale any less relevant. Stevenson is quite brave and forward-thinking in how he tackles these controversial and sensitive subjects. It's hard to know exactly what he thought. Science seems dangerous, but denying it perhaps even more so? I'm Miss Meeks and we've been looking at the roles of science and religion in the strange case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde.